Jesus is risen. Jesus is risen. Yay. If we, I'm going to ask everyone, first of all, welcoming you, all our guests and visitors, and this excitement is really kind of cool, but we're going to get ready to start. So if I could have everyone find their seats. I'm also going to ask um, everyone if you would please check your cell phones and make sure they are on silent or turned off. It's easy to forget that today. Um, and put your iPads down, your cameras, so that we can enter into a great celebration of this event. Um, for those of you who do not know, yes, this is being recorded. Um, so don't worry, we've got all the camera angles covered. Okay? Again, so if we could just settle ourselves, please, reminding us that we always live and breathe in God's presence as we get ready for this very special day for some of our young people. Thank you. Welcome to St. Blaise as we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Be sure to save the dates for the last 50th anniversary celebration events. The anniversary dinner is on Friday, June 23rd, and the anniversary mass will be held on Sunday, June 25th. More details to come soon. Registration for this year's Summer Circle Trailblazers is open. Sign up your child and to volunteer. Order forms for volunteer t-shirts and registration forms are in the parish office as well as on the information desk in the gathering space. Don't wait. Did you know that if you're a volunteer for Summer Circle, McCrest or catechist, you need to attend the Protecting God's Children workshop. Register for the next one at St. Blaise on Saturday, May 6th online. Check the bulletin for registration information. Next Sunday is Catholic Services Appeal. Look for your CSA envelope in the mail if you haven't already received it and bring your pledge or contribution in the envelope next weekend. Don't forget to stop in the parish office after Mass to purchase your copy of the CD, A Saint Blaise Celebration, for $15. It is a collection of all of your Saint Blaise favorites, sung by all of our music ministries and the funeral for Christopher Walsh is Tuesday, May 2nd at 9.30 a.m. Please keep Christopher and his family in your prayers. Please stand. Let us welcome each other in the love of Jesus Christ. Please join in singing song number 542. That's the song that Easter day with joy was bright. Again, the number is 542.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus is risen. May the grace and peace of our risen Lord be with you all. And I just want to welcome again the family, friends of our first communicants. It is wonderful to have you all here today on this third Sunday of Easter as we celebrate the body and blood of Christ. Let us sing the Lord's praise in the Gloria. God of Easter glory, you gather your church to celebrate the weekly memorial of the Passover of the Lord. May we recognize the risen Christ in the breaking of the bread. May the risen Christ open our hearts to understand the scriptures, for he lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We continue our Easter readings from the Acts of the Apostles. Today's selection is part of Peter's sermon 
on Pentecost. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, You who are Jews, indeed, all of you staying in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to my words. You who are Israelites, hear these words. Jesus the Nazarene was a man commended to you by God with mighty deeds, wonders, and signs, which God worked through him in your midst, as you yourselves know. This man, delivered up by the set plan and foreknowledge of God, you killed, using lawless men to crucify him. But God raised him up, releasing him from the throes of death, because it was impossible for him to be held by it. For David says of him, I saw the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Therefore, my heart has been glad and my tongue exalted. My flesh, too, will dwell in hope, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You have made known to me the paths of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. My brothers, one can confidently say to you about the patriarch David that he died and was buried, and his tomb is in our midst to this day. But since he was a prophet and knew that God had sworn an oath to him that he would set one of his descendants upon his throne, he foresaw and spoke of the resurrection of the Christ, that neither was he abandoned to the netherworld, nor did his flesh see corruption. God raised this Jesus, of this we are all witnesses. Exalted at the right hand of God, he received the promise of the Holy Spirit from the Father and poured him forth as you see and hear. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclamation of Psalm 16.
the Christians for whom the first letter of Peter was written were recent converts from paganism. They found themselves in a small minority in pagan surroundings. Their neighbors and local authorities made life miserable for them. Today's passage offers encouragement by reminding them that Jesus died and rose for them. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you invoke as Father him who judges impartially according to each one's works, conduct yourselves with reverence during the time of your sojourning, realizing that you were ransomed from your futile conduct, handed on by your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ as the spotless, unblemished lamb. He was known before the foundation of the world, but revealed in the final time for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus. And they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, What are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped, looking downcast, and one of them, Cleopas, said in reply, 
Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there these past few days? What things? Jesus asked. They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, how our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. We were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body, but came back and reported that they had seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. He said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ had to suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going farther. But they urged him, stay with us. It is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was with them at table, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him, but he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us? So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those who were with them, saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how that he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Jesus is risen. risen. And how many of you have seen the movie Beauty and the Beast? Okay, quite a few of you. How about the cartoon version? Have you seen that one? Not that many in the church, though. Really? None of you guys have seen it? You just dropped the kids off the theater? Left them? (laughs) I don't want to call Healthy Human Services on you, really. (laughs) So who is your favorite character? Let's go back here. Belle's your favorite character. Okay, why is Belle your favorite character? Uh Uh-huh. Okay, because she, she, she took care, she met the beast, and she was sweet to her father. Very good. Yeah, she actually saved her father, right? She went into jail for him when the beast had, had him held captive. Anybody else have another favorite character? Okay, you like the pot. Okay. Now, why do you like Mrs. Potts? Because she's just funny? Yeah, Okay. <laughs> The Beast, okay. And why do you like the Beast? He's a good dancer. Yes, he is. (laughs) I I have to tell you, my my favorite character is the horse. I like Philippe the best. That, That poor horse 
had to go from the village to the castle, to the castle, to the village, from the village, to the back and forth, back and forth, always being attacked by wolves. He never got any real credit, but I, he's my favorite. But, okay, remember, remember the song that they were singing when all the food was coming out and the kitchen utensils? Remember that song? What's, what was it? What's it called? Be our, be our guest. Be our guest. Be our guest. Remember that? Have you ever thought about that song? tied to Sunday morning? Isn't that what Jesus and the saints sing to us every Sunday? Be our guest. Come to our house. Come to our table. Be our guest. Every Sunday, we hear that song in our hearts because Jesus is calling us to be his guest at his table. And it takes quite a while in that story. But finally, finally, Bell and the Beast sit down at table, right? What does that table look like? Is it round? Is it square? Remember what the table itself looked like? The shape of it? It's a very formal table. It's long, right? It's almost as long as this aisle, isn't it? It's a long table. And if you recall, the beast is sitting at one end, right? And Belle's where? She's way at the other end. If I didn't have a microphone on right now, and someone was standing over there, they probably wouldn't hear me very well, right? That's a long way to try to talk to someone. So. What happens? What does the beast do? They're sitting at this long table getting ready to eat, and the beast does what? Do you remember? <coughs> does he stay at where he is at the end of the table? No one remembers? Yeah, he gets up, and he comes all the way to where Bell is. Now I know that's probably a little bit subtle, but you have to understand this is his house, and that's his table. He's sitting at the head of his table, the most important spot, and he says, this isn't going to work. I can't talk to her like this. So he gets up and leaves his proper place that he belongs at the head of the table and comes all the way to what we call the foot of the table, to the lowest place of the table. So he can sit next to Bell. And then they're ready to have their soup. But it's kind of awkward because the beast can't use a spoon, can he? He's just got like claws. So he always has to squeeze the bowl and kind of slurp it, right? He has to do what your parents tell you not to do. He has to slurp his soup. And Belle has her spoon in her hand, right? And she's ready to dig in. What does she do? Remember? Yeah, she puts her, her, her spoon down and she looks over at the beast and realizes she doesn't want to make him feel bad because he doesn't have fingers, he can't use utensils. So she puts her spoon down and she picks up her soup and she slurps it too. And that is what happens when we come to the table. Jesus comes from his rightful place as our Lord and Master and comes all the way down to meet us where we're at. And he comes to us as food, as bread and wine. And then we, in turn, learn from that 
And so we try to be like him in showing kindness and respect to others. Not making fun of them, not bullying them, not laughing at them when they make a mistake. Just as Gull recognized the beast was limited, he couldn't use a spoon. So she adapted to what he could do. That's what the Eucharist teaches us to do. To be like Jesus, to do what Jesus would do. And so we come to the table to receive Jesus into our bodies, into our hearts and souls, so that we can become like Jesus. So are you ready to come to the table? Yeah? You know what? Do you hear it? I hear it. I hear Jesus, and I hear the saints and angels. And they're singing, be our guest. Be our guest. And I know you'll be their guest today. And I hope you'll be their guest every Sunday. And before we come to the table, we have to remember that we are baptized because that's how we come to the table is through our baptism. So let us now stand and renew our baptismal promises. Do you reject sin so as to live in the glorious freedom of the children of God? I do. Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, died and was buried, rose from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the church, and we are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. With confidence in God's love, we make our prayer to the Lord. crucified and risen through our words, actions, and attitudes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. May world leaders, lawmakers, CEOs, and judges work for the common good, support our poor, hungry, and refugees, and seek to build a world where all people live in dignity, we pray to the Lord. Lord, May peace pervade our hearts and our world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, May we relinquish ties to money, fame, pride, power, or conventionality. May we embrace the new life and new vision of the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, May those celebrating their first Eucharist this weekend recognize Jesus in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord. May the truths of the scriptures burn in our hearts and enkindle actions of justice, we pray to the Lord. May all who are overwhelmed by fear, anxiety, or distress be freed by the joy and might of the resurrection, we pray to the Lord. Lord May the dead now share in the resurrection of Jesus, we remember Hedwig Carp, mother of Kathy, Abella, 
Diane Bedard, mother of Anne Marie Bedard, Rita Lombardi, sister of Dora Lombardi, Christopher Walsh, we pray to the Lord. Please join in singing song number 651. That's the song, Open My Eyes. Again, the number is 651. My sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God Almighty. Church. 
Lord, receive these gifts from your church. May the great joy you give us come to completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus is risen. Indeed, he is risen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. In him a new age has dawned. The long reign of sin is ended. A broken world has been renewed and humanity made whole. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. The joy of the resurrection renews the earth, while the whole company of heaven sings the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts by sending your Spirit upon them so that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant that will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of love, together with Francis, our Pope, and Alan, our Bishop, and with all the baptized. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your presence, 
have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, St. Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints, we may be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. into Christ Jesus and sealed with the Holy Spirit we dare to pray our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And let us share with one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy. Please join in singing song number 918. That's the song in the breaking of the bread. The number again is 918.
Let us pray. Lord, look on your people with kindness, and by these Easter mysteries, bring us to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. I want to take a moment to um, acknowledge and thank Ann Cruz, our director of faith formation. Um, you, um, you may not realize, but Ann has been struck mute. And um, it reminds me a little bit of um, John the Baptist's father, Zechariah. He has a vision and can't speak. So uh, I don't know if Ann's had a vision or not, but we'll find out when she can open and talk again. So, but Ann, congratulations. Thank you. We also want to thank all of our catechists and catechist aides, and a special thanks and congratulations to the parents of our first communicants um, on the day of their baptism. You became their first and best teachers in our faith. And so we congratulate you on fulfilling that ministry, and I urge you to continue to fulfill that ministry for your children. So congratulations and thank you. And now we're going to have our young people come forward and stand here on the top step of the sanctuary while we pray a blessing over them. And I invite the church in joining me in extending your right arms in a gesture of blessing over our first communicants. Having been nourished at the Lord's table, may you experience being one with Christ and one with all your sisters and brothers in the family of the church. Amen. May you keep God's commandment and the precept of the church by keeping holy the Sabbath and eating the body and blood of Christ each and every Sunday and holy day of obligation. Amen. Amen. May you become what you eat and drink so that just as bread and wine are changed into the body and blood of Christ, may you too be changed and become the body and blood of Christ. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Sharing the joy of our Lord's resurrection, we go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. I baptize you in the name of the Father. I baptize you in the name of the Son. I baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Go out and spread good news. I send you out on a mission of love 
I send you out on a mission of love. I send you out on a mission of love. And know that I am with you always until the end of the world. Well, it's time for us to become people with spirit. It's time for us to become people of love. It's time for us to know that Jesus Christ is risen, forgives our sins, and brings us to life.